What's going on guys, Mohamed Masakoy here coming back at you with another video and today we are doing another rebuild and that is going to be the rebuild of the Cleveland Browns, however with a little bit of a twist as you guys may very well know, the Cleveland Browns have completed the impossible, an imperfect season, an imperfect season of 0 and 16, that is 0 wins and 16 losses, the only team other than the 2008 Detroit Lions to ever accomplish that feat, if you want to say that's a, an accomplishment, which it's not really. Of course, the Creamsicle Bucks went 0 and 14. They didn't have a 16 game season back then, um, back in 82, 83, something like that. But uh, yes, the Browns have completed the imperfect season. Very close last year, but managed to beat. The Chargers and the Browns were in some games this year. They very easily could have beaten the Steelers in Week 17 against Landry Jones, who was starting over Big Ben. You know, wanted to rest Big Ben. They easily could have beaten the Packers. The Browns have been in games this year, and they just haven't managed to win any of them. Clearly, you know, injuries to Joe Thomas hurt as well, and a rookie quarterback into Sean Kaiser. I mean, they weren't expected to do great, but I'm gonna start standing up for this roster. Um, it's not really all that bad. You have a number of players that had great seasons. Jason McCourty played out of his mind. Brianne Body Calhoun had a really, really, really good season for a guy that hasn't been much in the rest of his career. You have Joe Schobert, who I don't think is particularly good, but he led the league in tackles. Christian Kirksey is a viable outside linebacker, potentially. Jamie Collins isn't that bad. Derek Kindred really isn't that bad, but Jabril Peppers is really struggling to play the safety role that they have him in with the Browns right now. And then offensively, Josh Gordon came back, and he looked great for the uh, at long stretch, the uh, end of the season there. But, you know, some other guys just didn't come to play, and for one reason or another, the Browns obviously lost every single game. Effort that we're going to put forth in this video is to rebuild the Browns and uh, get them to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, establish a Cleveland Browns dynasty so without further ado, I've rambled for enough. Let's get this thing underway. All right, so I think a big problem with the Browns this year is uh, Hugh Jackson's incompetence. His imp he's just been so incompetent, it's not even funny. Terrible head coach. Joel Batoni is another really good player I didn't mention. So we're going to go ahead and get all the actual starters in their right spots. Corey Coleman, of course. Richard Higgins actually didn't have too bad of a season. David Njoku had a decent rookie season. Seth Devolve isn't... Uh, all that bad. And Kevin Zeitler, not bad. It's all about these guys meshing as an offensive line, too. As a lot of these guys, his first year playing with these guys. Uh, I keep saying guys a lot, but JC Treader is new. Kevin Zeitler's new. Um, I think I'm missing somebody. Nah, I guess the rest is kind of where it's supposed to be. But a lot of these players, they need to build up the chemistry. And that comes with, uh, with playing with each other. Miles Garrett had an insane season. But yeah, this isn't that bad of a team. I don't think it is the worst in the NFL in terms of total roster. I think this team with Aaron Rodgers maybe does better than the Packers did this year. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I think by any means necessary, we are going to get the Browns to their own heyday. And, um, yeah, let's let's get into it. With our first trade, I figured let's bring in a player that can help out the team a little bit at one of our main positions of need, and that is going to be the safety position. And we brought in one of the best in the NFL, trading Isaiah Crowell, Jamie Collins, and a third-round pick for Landon Collins. Giving up a decent bit of value, but we are making it all back in what is one of the best safeties in the NFL in Landon Collins. He should go in really, really well. Now, I'm not sure if I want to uh, move Derek Kindred to free safety. He doesn't project well there. Um, but we could potentially try it out boost his own or do we trade him for a free safety or a draft pick or another linebacker I'm not sure all right I think I'm done with trade so far for the first season I'm comfortable where we are and I know Joe Thomas is likely going to retire uh, either at the end of this season or next season that's how it's happened in the past for me hopefully he decides to stay so we can get Joe Thomas finally to the playoffs and to the Super Bowl defensively I think we're set um like, I do want to trade Derek Kindred, but we're going to start him at free safety for now. And uh, I could eventually trade him at the end of next season. Jabril Peppers just can't start by himself. And uh, Landon Collins, when he played free safety for the Giants, was terrible. So we're going to stick to him being at strong safety. Derek Kindred even went up at overall. 
Um, but yeah, I'd like to trade some players. Jason McCourty, Jamar Taylor. Reason I'm not trading Jason McCourty is even though he's 30 and he's going to regress to like an 85, at least probably by the end of this season, um, he still is decent. We're going to use him for this year and uh, hopefully he does all right. But yeah, I will see you at the midseason mark and we'll see who we have to resign. <laughs> Frick. All right, week eight. Josh Gordon is a free agent. We are one and seven, killing it. Go Bengals as well, one and six. I'm not a Bengals fan. I'm a Giants fan. But a uh, decent amount of XP. Miles Garrett is going off. Miles, what are you doing to get that? Focus training, two sacks. Miles Garrett might be actually killing it right now. Um, defensive player of the week. There it is. There it is. Josh Gordon is a free agent, though. Who else is a free agent? Um. Really no one of any note. But I do want to bring back Josh Gordon. He does have slow development. But if we can get him to a Pro Bowl or something, there's a chance that he can uh, actually not have slow development anymore. Or we could get him um, to, like, we could buy normal development or whatever. But he's not a bad player. And he's super good in real life. But in the game, he's certainly not bad. Got to boost route running. Got to boost awareness. And, um... I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, he's a very good player. And uh, if it's not for uh, his affinity for smoking the ganja, a little, bit, a little bit of reefer Josh Gordon, he'd be great. But I'm going to offer him a four-year deal. High in the sky, Josh Gordon's back on the team. So the only player I'm going to upgrade is Miles Garrett. I want him getting after the quarterback, getting XP. So uh, he's up to an 88 overall. I want more sacks. I want defensive player of the year. Because all that equates to is more experience points that we can use to upgrade the rest of the team. So we get that increased weekly player XP goal. And I will see you guys at the end of the season. Maybe we'll get two wins. I don't know. But this is the 0-16 team. All right, playoff time. But not for us because we're the Cleveland Browns. We don't do that. 2-14, we do pull out the second win. There we go. <laughs> Check out the stats. See how this travesty occurred. Deshaun Kaiser. 3,361 yards, 17 touchdowns, 22 interceptions. Seems about accurate, honestly. What is it? Well, I don't know. What did Deshaun Kaiser do this year? He had 2,894 yards or more yards in the game, 17 touchdowns, which he only had 11 this year, and 22 interceptions, so right on the nose there. Did he start all 16 games? I don't think he did. Deshaun Kaiser, he started 15. All right. Totally forgot there were more things than just passing. I almost just blanked it didn't show this. Duke Johnson, who I think can be a really good player in real life. I want him to be our backup in the game. He had nine touchdowns, 983 yards, two fumbles. I think I'm also going to use real prospects for this first draft. Because that makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit more realistic. Um, Browns, David Njoku led our team in catches. But so did Corey Coleman and Ricardo Lewis. Three receivers with 60 catches. Ricardo Lewis almost had 1,000 yards as well. Josh Gordon did not have a particularly good season. How do you only have 38 catches? He was our number one. <laughs> what is going on? Six touchdowns for David Njoku as well. Um, blocking. Joe Thomas let up 11 sacks. I hate simulation, dude. Joe Schobert had 175 tackles. Oh, my goodness. Tackles for loss. Miles Garrett. Oh, actually, Danny Shelton had 22. Miles Garrett went off, though, with 19. Five for Emmanuel Agba. Quarterback sacks, 16 from the first round pick out of Texas A&M. Interceptions, we have five for Jason McCourty. Maybe that's why we kept him. Rian Body Calhoun with two. Force fumbles, we have three for Tank Carter. All right, two recoveries as well for the guy. Defensive touchdowns, nobody had any. We don't make plays, we don't score. That's a 32nd offense in the NFL, AKA dead last. And that's the second worst defense in the NFL. Things will change as Tom Brady wins MVP. Some things never change. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Defensive Player of the Year, Trey Flowers. He's a good player in real life, too. Don't see any Browns. Where's, why is Miles Garrett not there? Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Kaiser at 5. David Njoku at 10. Show me Miles Garrett. Boom, Miles Garrett, Defensive Rookie of the Year. You love to see it. He'll have a ton of XP. We'll upgrade him. Miles Garrett will be a beast like he is every single time he's like a 99 by year number two like almost every single time joe schobert made the pro bowl too and he got quick development because of it 15k xp that's awesome we might actually be able to keep him now well it's not i mean i'm not a huge joe schobert fan or anything but miles garrett mainly is a superstar on our team obviously superstar development 
but uh, he went off one defensive rookie of the year. No one else has any notable amount of XP, really. And then offensively, David Njoku maybe made the Pro Bowl. You make the Pro Bowl, David, with six touchdowns? No. It's just a ridiculous amount of XP, then. He had to do something. Oh, he completed his level four for 55 catches. A season goal. Okay, I was looking for it. Couldn't find it. I didn't mention it in the start either, but Larry Ogunjobi is a great player in real life, and Danny Shelton's one of the best nose tackles in the NFL. So, like, we do have potential with this team, but uh, we're going to be trading a lot of these guys away. Not Larry Ogunjobi. He's a beast. Not Danny Shelton. Also a beast. But uh, guys like Jason McCourty are probably going to go. We are in free agency now. The free agent signing period. Hoping for some big free agents to be here. Devontae Adams is a decent free agent. He would come in at wide receiver beautifully. We do have the cap room. We have a ton of cap room. Question is, do I want to overpay Devontae Adams to come to Cleveland? You might have to. I was second on Devontae Adams. I went up to 105 points. Wasn't going up to 121. And the Redskins are going to go ahead and get Devontae Adams. I'm not going to pay... Like, I know he's really good in the game. He's a 93-94 overall. I'm not going to pay Devontae Adams like 11 or $12 million a year. It's just not going to happen. Here we are in the draft. We have the number one overall pick. It looks like the Texans did okay with Deshaun Watson. They finished at 13. So unlike where we would actually have the fourth overall pick in real life, we are stuck with the, what is that? The 12th, did I say? 14th? 13th. Well, I'm, I'm dumb. All right, with the, with the first pick, I am not taking a quarterback. I am taking Watts McBurrows out of USC. It's one of the best names I've seen. He will be changed to an actual prospect. Um, in this draft. Maybe we'll make him Roquan Smith or something because I'll probably play him on the inside and he's the best inside linebacker in this class. A minus hit power, B plus tackle, B pursuit, but look at that speed. 458. He's incredibly strong. 31 reps at 225. Extremely quick. It's an amazing combine. Here he is. Watts McBurrows. 79 overall, the number 13th player in this draft. We take him at number one. 87 speed, 87 tackle, 82 block shed, 92 hit power. 79 finesse moves, 83 pursuit. What's your uh, zone? 65, 65 man as well. I have to boost that. He's not going to be rushing the passer. He is going to be in coverage mainly. So we're going to simulate to 13 now. And use it to take Antoine Hopkins, a.k.a. Saquon Barkley. This one went to LSU. Again, we're going to change everything. Top three skills are amazing. A minus juke, A minus carry, B minus vision. Not amazing. They're very good though. 4, 3, 6 speed. Great three cone and 20 yard shuttle as well. Here he is, Antoine Hopkins, 81 overall superstar development, 93 speed, 91 excel, 90 carrying, 82 ball carry vision, 92 juke move. He's ranked number 12 in the class. Number 12 at 81 overall. We drafted the 13. Damn, this draft class must be stacked. Now we are in the second round. We have the number one overall pick. I got to figure out who I want. With this trade, I'm trading one of my second round picks, not the first one, not the pick that I have right now. I'm trading the number 45 overall pick. We have 33 right now. Jason McCourty, who did drop to an 84 overall, and a fourth rounder again this year for Reuben Foster of the 49ers. One of the best young players in the NFL. Sick linebacker for the 49ers. He is now a Cleveland Brown as our linebacking core is getting insane. We still have this pick. I'm going to trade down. You guys know me. I like to trade down. And we're going to get a first rounder next year. Who's willing to talk business? New Orleans Saints. Sign me up. No Drew Brees. Unless they draft a good quarterback, I think we should be set. I'm taking another running back. This is Ramel John out of Northwestern. He's a power back. Maybe we'll make this Bo Scarborough or something. Um, B plus stiff arm, B trucking, B carrying. He's got 4-4-6 four, four, speed, though. He is strong. I feel like I wanted to take him. If I had to take him, if I wanted him. Okay, so he's a 70 uh, overall. 70 overall, but you have to consider the fact he is in a non-power back scheme. So he's a 49th player in the draft, which is pretty good. We drafted him at 61. He is not actually a 70 overall. He's probably more like a 76, maybe a 77. 89 speed, 83 excel, 84 carry, 83 ball carry vision, 85 trucking, 88 stiff arm. Pretty good player coming out of the draft. I wish that speed was a 90, though. Wish it was a 90. As you see, we didn't pick in the entire third round, traded that pick away, so I needed to take him. And uh, I'm pretty happy, uh, happy with the pick, but got to capitalize on the rest now. So many mid-round picks. Jonathan Austin is supposed to go late fifth round. I don't know who will make him just yet, but he's got great top three skills. B-plus catching, B-plus route running, B-release, 
Combine doesn't look crazy until you realize that his three cone was awesome. His 20 yard shuttle was awesome. Blazing fast, 43740. Welcome to the team. And he is an 83 overall. Ranked number two in the class. We took him at 97. I could have never, never guessed that he'd be anywhere close to this good as a late fifth rounder. 94 speed, 86 route running, 87 catching, 97 acceleration, 80 catching traffic, 83 spectacular catch, 89 jumping, 78 awareness. Oh my god. 85 release, 89 agility, 86 ball carry vision, 85 elusiveness. Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to the team. Oh my god. Maybe I should make that actually like a top top prospect instead of just a random mid-round guy. I might have to do that. I don't know. That's what I get for trusting my gut though. These three players are on my board next. We are in the fourth round. I think I'm just going to trade down. Pick up a three next year from the Bengals. They'll likely suck again. Andy Dalton, the red rifle. Not that good. Pick another third rounder. All right, Buffalo. Okay, I'll take that in the fifth. All right, now we're in range. We're in the sixth round. Taking Howard Armstrong. I know. Three running backs in the same draft. Trust me. I have a plan. Howard Armstrong is a very, very good player, in my opinion. R tested really well. 4-3-7 speed. Good top three skills. Couldn't pass him up in the sixth round. Here he is. I mean, come on. 76 overall superstar development. Ranked number 43 in the draft. We took him at 161. 93 speed, 89 acceleration, 81 carrying, 85 ball carry vision, 78 spin, 89 juke, 73 tucking, uh, 73 trucking, I should say, 72 stiff arm. This guy, I mean, if you couldn't tell from his development, his arms are strong. Howard Armstrong, fuck me, right? Okay. All right, back-to-back -back picks here in the sixth round. I'm taking these two players. Um, I'll take Bradley Crosby first. A linebacker with good top three skills. Really good speed at 4.59. Here he is. 68 overall. That's got to be scheme-based. I'd say he's ranked number 160. We took him at 183. Maybe that's not. Maybe that's just his overall. He's a really good athlete. His awareness has got to be like 40. 60 awareness. 61 player. He, how is he 68? Doesn't look like a 68. Looks a little bit better than that. All right. Next pick, Cedric Goodwin. Another linebacker. Similar in traits. Fast as well. He's a 70 overall, ranked number 115 in the class. 85 speed, 81 tackle, 76 block shot, 86 to power, 79 pursuit, or some uh, some attributes that stand out there. And his awareness is, is low, but his play rate's pretty high. 72. That's strange. I really don't have anything planned for these picks. Um, so I don't know what to do. It's my last pick. I actually only have one. Um, Jadarius Benjamin, you look all right. 72 overall, excellent pick. He's ranked 80 in the class. We took him at 193. 92 speed, 83 zone, 87 acceleration. <laughs> He's not a bad pick. All right, draft recap. We had a crazy draft. It was so insane. I'm going to change some of these players' names. This was a fantastic draft. We really capitalized. What's your real overall? Why is it not telling me? He's not a 70. He's not a 70 overall. He's not a 70. I don't understand. I'm going to change the scheme to... Uh, to power back and see if that changes anything. All right, and I know we didn't need to draft three running backs, but I couldn't pass up those players. And um, his real overall is a 75 in his ideal scheme. That makes a little bit more sense. So I went around the league, and the highest overall I found was an 83 overall. I don't know if it's just scheme fit or what, but I didn't see any other 83s um, or an 84, and he was second in the class, so that's kind of odd. Got to be a free agent fullback, perhaps. Oh, I forgot. It. Uh, yeah, I'm going to change these names now. All right, so the players are complete. We've done Roquan Smith, Saquon Barkley, Bo Scarborough, DJ Chark. I thought he really fit this uh, profile well because he's a guy that went to uh, went to LSU at a crazy season, was playing really well, elevating his game every single week. And uh, even though the elevated game didn't necessarily uh, have him as a projected top pick, could be a middle-round guy that ends up being really, really good. We also went with Sony Michelle and didn't touch the bottom guys there. So a bunch of really, really good new players being added to the team. Be interesting to find out where we can uh, make them all fit. Deshaun Kaiser is still the starting QB. Just everyone's playing with no confidence. I also might trade or make Duke Johnson a receiver. I'm not positive yet. Yep, classic Madden. There he is. Taylor Jean... Oh, that's you're not going to have me pronounce French names. There's another fullback here. Jesse Schilling. That's a bit easier, easier to say. Uh, Taylor Jean Gillet. G. 
Jean, let me get someone who speaks French. Let me, oh, he's probably asleep. Uh, he's basically a lineman. He has 65 speed. <laughs> oh my god, how are you that slow? I might not even want him. Nope, 68 speed's the alternative. I'll take the better guy. Um, we're just gonna total United States this one and say Taylor Gene Gills. That's his name. And with this trade, I'm trading Jamar Taylor and two third round picks, one this year, one next year, for one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL in Patrick Peterson of the Arizona Cardinals. And this team is really coming together quite nicely, I have to say. Bunch of really good players. And um, again, it's about progression, about these guys taking it up to the next level. You got Joe Schobert, Ruben Foster going to play middle linebacker. Roquan Smith starting at right outside linebacker. Defensive line is pretty nice. And now, of course, Pat Pete is uh, making that secondary a lot better. Defensive, excuse me, offensively, of course, starting Saquon Barkley. We've got Sonny Michelle as our backup running back. Two superstar development running backs in there. Of course, DJ Shark coming out as an 83 overall. That's absolutely insane. And uh, the offensive line needs to get boosted up. I'm going to go ahead and let the CPU take care of that. We need players to come out and make big plays this year. We need action. We need things to happen. This could be another bad season. I'm not exactly sure. But we're going to go to the midseason mark regardless. We need upgrades on the offensive line. And uh, I think maybe our biggest need is still a quarterback. Deshaun Kaiser did not progress well enough in that last season. All right, we are 2-5 and five at the midseason mark. Doing uh, better than last year as we have matched our... Uh, end of season win total as Joe Thomas is a free agent. Who else is here? Landon Collins, Danny Shelton, Brian, Buddy Calhoun would like all four of these guys to return. Duke Johnson, of course, was moved to wide receiver where he's a 72 overall. I'd, I would bring Duke Johnson in for receiver depth. All four have returned to decent deals. Joe Thomas, glad to have him back. Looks like he's committed to Cleveland, and I like it. He has been his entire career. But, uh, yeah, I will see you guys for the playoffs. Believe Land is not yet with the Browns. But uh, maybe next year. Maybe next year. All right, clearly we have not made the playoffs for... No, that's actually the Bengals. Six and ten we finish. Hoping for some awards, though. Deshaun Kaiser, actually an improved performance. 4,306 yards, 35 touchdowns, 20 interceptions. Rushing, Saquon Barkley... Rough first season, 1,070 yards, six touchdowns. We've got to improve uh, that offensive line. Three fumbles, average only 3.3 on the ground. Sony Michelle was even worse. Receiving, David Njoku had exactly 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. But look at DJ Chark, 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. Josh Gordon had nine touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards for him. Blocking, Joe Batonio, great season. Rod Johnson and Joe Thomas, again, not so much, but... What can you do with that simulation? Roquan Smith led our team in tackles with 127. Also two tackles for loss, however. 11 from Danny Shelton led the team. 8 for Miles Garrett. Quarterback sacks, 15 for Miles Garrett. 11 for Larry Oga Joby. 8 for Emmanuel Ogba. 7.5 for Danny Shelton. Interceptions, we have 5 from Pat Pete. 4 for Ruben Foster. 3 for Lennon Collins. And 2 for Derek Kindred. 1 for Joe Schobert as well, if that's notable. Force fumbles, four for Roquan Smith, and three recoveries. Oh, my goodness. Is that defensive rookie of the year, anyone? Could be. No defensive touchdowns for us as uh, we're going to check out yearly awards here. Leonard Fournette is the MVP. That is actually quite interesting. Uh, ASC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Leonard Fournette as well. Deshaun Kaiser in there at number nine. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Todd Davis. Adam Gotts is in there at number two. On what planet? That's ridiculous. No Browns. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Gregory Vinson. Running back for the Dolphins. Saw that. Saquon Barkley at 3. DJ Chark at 5. Sony Michelle at 9. Defensive Rookie of the Year. It is Roquan Smith. We got Jadarius Benjamin, the nickel cornerback, at number 2 as well. We drafted him in the 7th uh, round. First pick of that. Okay. Decent season for our rookies. We should have some, some XP to spend. Also, our fullback needs to come back. I mean, he doesn't need to, but we're going to bring him back. 65 speed is uh, really fast. Let's give him a five-year deal. Maybe a bit less money. 159, you're going to accept that? All right, Taylor, last name is back. Now we go again into free agency. 51 mil in cap room. Looking to potentially... Wow, okay. Don't do me like that. Don't show me the sack attack from the silver and black Khalil Mack. Oh, I want to so bad. All right, I had to go after him. 
He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. He was in free agency, which he never is. I had to. I had to. He's probably going to be playing left end um, as Emmanuel Agua really hasn't developed all that well. And we are in the 4-3. Khalil Mack coming off the edge with Miles Garrett. Are you kidding me? I hear a lot about Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. This would be the best pass rush duo in the NFL. I love how these guys are making Pro Bowls, getting all this XP. Larry Ogunjobi with quick development after the Pro Bowl appearance. I mean, Miles Garrett definitely made the Pro Bowl or something here. Yeah, Pro Bowl appearance, ton of XP. Roquan Smith absolutely killed it. He got quick development and 32,000 XP for Defensive Rookie of the Year. I mean, I love this XP. How much for Jadarius Benjamin? Only, only 9K? It's brutal. Ruben Foster, is that another Pro Bowl? It's not, actually. Really. All right, this is the upgraded team. We are sticking with Deshaun Kaiser. Some players are already playing um, with, with uh, confidence low, making their overall lower. Defensively, I mean, we're not in a fantastic spot other than the team's sick. Just kidding. Free safety, though, is, is the one area that I'd like to improve. And, you know, maybe left outside linebacker. Emmanuel Agba, I forgot about, but, like, He's not all that good in the game. He just didn't progress so well, and, like, there's nothing I can do about that. He's 79 overall, which isn't bad. It's a good backup. We have Khalil Mack now. No need to worry. But, um, yeah, I really want to upgrade the offensive line. Got a lot of goals in this draft. I'll tell you this. Uh, Tremonde, Tremonde Neal character looks pretty decent at center. All right, here we are in the draft. We have the ninth overall pick. And the 20, 29th overall pick in the first round. We also have the 41st. We had some decent picks. Not sure exactly where I want to go just yet. At pick number 9, I'm taking a quarterback, Roy Wolf out of Louisville. We know a Louisville quarterback in, I guess, technically last year's draft when this is happening. But uh, we're not going to change any of the prospect names. We're taking the Wolf. Roy Wolf, we got the Wolf Pack. There's branding opportunity here, all right? Six foot five, good top three skills. Here we go. 79 overall, quick development. I'll take it. It's reach, whatever. It's our franchise QB now, quick development. I'll take the reach. 82 deep accuracy, 82 mid, 89 short, 92 throw power, 86 throw on the run. He is better at Deshaun, or than Deshaun Kaiser at everything. Like, everything. So it appears that Seth Devolve had garnered interest from the Tennessee Titans who picked the number 18. We're trading him a second rounder next year and a fifth rounder next year for that first overall pick from the Tennessee Titans. Trading back up into the first round to get a player we want. And that player is, to me, a cannot-miss prospect. Can't miss. Shanon Dudley out of Clemson. A-minus press. B-man. B-zone. 4-3 flat speed. He can jump out of the gym. Shout-out to Riff Raff. Great broad jump as well he's quick he's agile shane on dudley 81 overall ranked number three in the class we took him at 18 94 speed 85 man 84 zone 90 press coming out of the draft i'll take it i'll take it solid you know what i'm doing it tremonde all right sure dude uh neil great combine great top three skills we're going center 79 overall quick development we could really play him anywhere on the line. 20 if in the entire class. We drafted him 29. 89 strength, 83 run block, 83 pass block, 87 impact blocking, 80 acceleration. 67 speed really isn't that slow either. And quick development, Tremonde. I don't buy that for a second. Next up, I'm going cornerback again. It's Cedric Hale out of Miami. Had a super, super good combine. 4-3-1 speed, great vertical, great three cone, great 20 yard shuttle. And great top three skills. B plus man coverage. There he is. 82 overall. He's ranked number two in the class. We drafted him at 41. See, that's the one thing that this isn't realistic. Because the Browns are drafting really well. 96 speed. 87 man. 84 zone. 78 press. Sick player. Man, we don't even need Pat Pete at this juncture. We really don't need Brian Body Calhoun. We do need Pat Pete. We could use another receiver. Tyler Bowen's going to be really good depth out of Richmond. Not that fast. He is strong. Maybe he'll be able to run block well as well. Good top three skills. Here he is in the third round. 76 overall, ranked number 64. We took him at 68. Decent looking. Uh, not crazy. Only 86 speed. His run blocking is not listed. 
It's not really too important, but he is a good fourth receiver. Next up, I'm going Morris Peterson out of Southern Miss. He looks okay, pretty fast. Decent top three skills. He's a good late third round guy. Morris Peterson, uh, interesting. Interesting. 68 overall. That's because he doesn't fit the scheme at all. He's a 3-4 pass rusher. We're going to play him in a 4-3. Or we're in a 4-3. Um, so he works more as a defensive end, even though he doesn't really have those attributes. Superstar development. 85 speed, 89 tackles, 73 block shit, 84 hit power, 76 pursuit. Now his finesse and power move are terrible. So we're, we got a fresh slate, basically, to play him uh, wherever we want. Awareness is terrible. Man and zone really aren't that bad comparatively. He's not a pass rusher. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, he could play... He could start at linebacker for us. I mean, superstar development is so useful. I could trade Joe Schobert for some offensive line help and start him at outside linebacker, and we'd be in business. All right, I've recruited the best offensive line help I could get. That's amazing that trade just went through. I mean, Madden's really got to fix their system. Uh, but Joe Schobert straight up for Zach Martin. He's going to help out the offensive line a lot. Right tackle, maybe? All right, we've made a trade. Christian Kirksey, fourth round pick, and Deshaun Kaiser for Marcus Williams. He's our new starting free safety. We got him from the Saints. And um, I may just trade them Derek Kindred, do them a favor. I decided I wanted Juju. Derek Kindred for Juju Smith Schuster. And um, this team really just came together fairly quickly. I mean, uh, we made some progress, of course, obviously. But with this great draft and trading for some players, I mean, it's at that next level. Fifth round, where I'm going Ryan Dalton. 75 overall. Good backup lineman. That's kind of all I was looking for. And uh, my next pick will be a lineman as well. You guys may have already saw his name. I don't remember what it was. But it is... Um, Edwin Barrett. Good looking offensive lineman as well. He's a 73 overall with superstar development. Why? I already have a full offensive line now. Ah, he's really... He'd be great, like, last year with Superstar. Superstar development, like, you, I can't talk this up enough. Superstar development is maybe the most important thing in the game. Like, <laughs> it's so useful. It crushes it in terms of how much XP they get. And I'll go uh, back up free safety. Fisher Bowers out of Marshall. I don't know. He's fast and strong. He's not great. Another pretty insane draft. Roy Wolf. Was he 70? I thought he was 76. I, yeah, he definitely was 79. Another insane draft class. I mean, just every pick seemed to hit the nail right on the head in terms of what we needed and the overall. So, like, even at defense uh, in the secondary, I mean, like, we got four sick cornerbacks now. Brian ba uh, Body Calhoun's going to move to the four because, like, he's not going to get XP the way Cedric Hale and a Shane on Dudley are going to. They're both normal. I get it. But they're younger. Ram Body Calhoun is 26. Shane on Dudley is going to be a 23 years old. And Cedric Hale is also going to be a 23 year old. We're in really good shape. I don't know who this Sateki Rayford fellow is. Looks like the CPU got him on the team somehow. He looks ridiculous. He has 87 power move with 80 speed. He just he has no play rec or awareness. I mean, I'm not going to ever touch him, but like, I man, where'd you get on the team from is what I'm saying. All right, guys, this is the upgraded team. Well, this is the upgraded team. Things are looking pretty good with Josh Gordon at the four. I mean, we got a, a really good group of receivers. Juju is going to be our, our lead. Well, they're not really good, but they have potential to be good. This is the, what, third season, and things are already really coming together. I'm a big fan of the defense. Uh, I mean, you see... Morris Peterson over here. He doesn't look great, but he has a ton of potential. Superstar development. That's really going to help out. We need him to have a big season. Rand Body Calhoun is going to move to the four. Everyone else is going to move up one. But then that's the team. I'm going to change that in the depth chart and see you guys at the midseason mark. We are four, two, and one at the midseason mark. Kind of a weird record. Second in the AFC North. Looks like Corey Coleman, JC Treader, and Emmanuel Agba are free agents. I do want to bring back Agba for sure. He'll be a good backup. We'll sign him like a five-year deal um solid backup and i do want to sign Corey coleman as well Corey coleman returns as well there's no one else i mean caleb brantley is really good at florida what does he want eh, no 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 <laughs> um 
And then Cody Kessler can walk through. Yeah, we, we don't really need anybody else. We have made the playoffs with the Browns in year three. Oh my goodness. Nine, six, and one. Three teams from the AFC North have made the playoffs. Let's see how that happened. Roy Wolf. It's a pretty good rookie season. 4,380 yards, 31 touchdowns, 19 interceptions. I mean, not amazing, but for a rookie, not too bad. Saquon Barkley, about 1,100 yards, 9 touchdowns. We need to get that the yards per carry up. What is going on? He fumbled the ball 7 times. He is 91 carrying. Oh, he really is no spin move or juke move probably at all. Jeez. Uh, juke move 92. We got to get that spin up probably. He's got 8K XP. That's not really a whole lot. Receiving... DJ Chark, 105 catches, 1,000 yards, and 7 touchdowns. Pretty good season for him, obviously. Corey Coleman, almost 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. Juju Smith-Schuster, 928 yards, 4 TDs. Blocking, how do we do? Uh, sacks are down with the uh, improvement overall of the of the line. Roquan Smith led our team in tackles again with 116. Ruben Foster, 107. Shanon Dudley had 100 at cornerback. That's kind of weird. <laughs> tackles for loss, 20 from Danny Shelton. Seven from Khalil Mack, excuse me, 17 from Khalil Mack, nine from Miles Garrett. Quarterback sacks, 18 from Khalil Mack, more than one a game. I love it. 12 and a half for Miles Garrett, 10 and a half for Danny Shelton. Roquan Smith even had four. Interceptions, Ruben Foster with six, Pat Pete with five, Cedric Hale, the rookie out of Miami, the U with four. Two for Landon Collins, two for Morris Peterson at left outside linebacker. He only had 37 tackles, though. Two for Shane on Dudley. I'm thinking what that was is Morris Peterson couldn't tackle for shit. So all the tackles ended up going to Shane on Dudley, who had 100. That's so many tackles for a cornerback. Forced fumbles, two for Miles Garrett. And fumble recovery is one. We only had four on the entire team. Defensive touchdowns, I see one. It's Cedric Hale. He had a really good season. He's got to be defensive rookie of the year, right? Leonard Fournette wins back to back MVPs. No other Browns in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Leonard Fournette. No Browns. Defensive Player of the Year, Calais Campbell. Any Browns in here that I'm missing? 18 sacks doesn't even get you consideration. All right. Offensive Rookie of the Year is our guy, Roy Wolf. Love it. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Come on. It's Deshaun Mingo. Uh, Shane on Dudley, a finish above Cedric Hale. Yes, tackles really are all this matters for. Cedric Hale with four. And Morris Peterson, actually, in the top 10 at number 10. Oh my god, DJ Shark has a ridiculous amount of XP. NFL receptions leader and a Pro Bowl in his second season. That hairline's receding, but his, his play is only improving. Oh, and that's something fun I just checked and backed out of because uh, I don't know how to use my hands. Offensive Rookie of the Year has granted Roy Wolf superstar development. At the start of the year, you wouldn't see uh, like awards and stuff contribute too much to development traits being increased, but lately they have been, I feel. All right, Browns against the Ravens, 9-6-1. Browns against the 11-4-1 Ravens. This is the upgraded team all the way. Um, Saquon Barkley, I have to say, has been disappointing. That's the one thing. He's been a little bit disappointing. Shane on Dudley's going to get back in there because he's better than Brianne Body Calhoun. Uh, we got Wheels as Ravens. Wheels is a bitch. Here we go. That means we should win for sure. Advancing to the divisional. Of course not. Um, Wheels still a bitch, though. Come on. J.C. Treader is our top free agent. Uh, no. Jags just won the Super Bowl. All right. Fair play. Robbie Blake Bortles. I swear. I swear. All right. Free agency. Who's here? Jordan Howard is a 98. Okay. We don't really want him. We have Richard Sherman. Carson Wentz is here. Tyler Higby. Deion Jones. Devondre Campbell. Looking for Healy 6. I don't... I don't see him. Probably like a 40 overall is why I can't. I don't really want to sign anybody. I'm comfortable with the team we have. I don't really see any holes. We got uh, Morris Peterson up to a 77 overall. He'll surely be into the 80s by the end of next season for the playoffs, which I think we'll make. And then at quarterback, Roy Wolf leading the Wolf Pack. I mean, he's a pretty good player. Superstar development now. We don't need a quarterback. Offensive. Oh, no. Joe Thomas retired. And we'll probably win the Super Bowl next year. Hold on. We got a guy here. Barrett. Can you play left tackle? You're going to have to. The draft really isn't all that important because we pretty much have our starters locked in. But I might make some moves to get a player that could really help us out. I'm not sure. All right. Looks like Brianne, Body Calhoun, and 
my first overall pick is going to allow me to move up to number 10. He was a cornerback who had some really good value. And uh, my player, thankfully, was not taken. We're going to draft him here. And he could be really good. He could start Wayne Hernandez out of Tennessee. Great top three skills. Amazing combine. Ridiculously fast. Ridiculously strong. Agile. Explosive. 76 overall. On what planet? 86 speed, 89 tackle, 86 block shit, 89 hit power. Um, low play rec, low awareness is going to do that to you. Wham. Like, what? He looks so good. How is he a 76? Um, doesn't fit our, our scheme, I guess. No, he does, actually. He looks good. Just, um, I'm not gonna play him because he has normal development. I was really hoping for, like, Superstar or something. But, uh, yeah, we only have a fourth now. And, uh, we, we, we have all our positions locked in anyway, so. Now nah, we're probably just done. I don't really, I don't really care about this draft. So this team does look pretty good other than left tackle. I suppose you could say that is our one a bad part of the team and it's not even that bad i mean he's 76 overall superstar development he'll be better uh morris peterson could be better will hernandez is going to play middle linebacker will be the backup and i think this team is pretty solid i have high hopes but you know it is the browns dude like any you know if anything bad can happen it probably will at the mid-season mark we are four and three which is actually sitting atop the afc north i will take that Miles Garrett's a free agent. He will not be cheap to retain, I'm sure, as is David Njoku. Ruben Foster, Pat Pete, Juju Smith-Schuster, Marcus Williams, Larry Ogunjobi. Don't really care for Rod Johnson. We'll deal with kicker and punter Zane Gonzalez and Britton Colquitt, respectively, later. All right, Larry Ogunjobi all the way through. Miles Garrett all happily re-signed. And hopefully we still can make the playoffs. Going to have to upgrade and uh, hopefully get there. We have made the playoffs again, 10-6, and six, which is actually uh, way atop the AFC North. Not a whole ton of coach XP, though. Roy Wolf of the Wolf Pack, nearly 5,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, 21 interceptions is way too many. Rushing, though, Saquon Barkley still can't average over 4 yards per carry. 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. Sony Michelle also below 3 per carry. 10 touchdowns, though. Receiving... Corey Coleman, 1,521 yards and five touchdowns. Jeez, 96 catches. DJ Chark had 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Not a whole touchdown, a lot of touchdowns to go around, I must say. But a lot of yardage. I don't know how we get more touchdowns. Edwin Barrett is awful, but that's okay. As Ruben Foster leads our team in tackles with 143, Roquan with 115. Tackles for loss, 21 from Khalil Mack, 12 from Miles Garrett, 12 from Danny Shelton, 11 from Larry Ogunjobi. As 14 sacks from Danny Shelton leads the team, 12 and a half for Miles Garrett, 11 for Khalil Mack, 8 for Larry Ogunjobi, interceptions, 4 for Ruben Foster, 3 for Lennon Collins. You know, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Sateki Rayford has 5 sacks. How are you even seeing the field? Good for him, I guess. I don't know. Force fumbles, 2 from Ruben Foster. Fumble recoveries is also 2 from Ruben Foster. Anyone get in the end zone defensively? Of course not. Awards. Blake Quinn of the Chargers wins MVP. Went 10 and 6. Roy Wolf at number 4. ASC Office Player of the Year. Also Blake Quinn. Roy Wolf number 8. Alright. Defensive Player of the Year. It's Ruben Foster. Alright. He's already 6. So that doesn't really help us out too much. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Of course it's Blake Quinn. Because why would an MVP... Did, did he win MVP as a rookie? That is develop a weird accent. I think maybe. Quay Reese wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Um... He went at MVP. God damn, as a rookie? Okay. Chargers out here cheating the game per usual. I fucking hate the Chargers in this. So the team is progressing pretty nicely. Saquon Barkley, despite his struggles, is up to an 88 overall. And uh, like he shouldn't be as bad as he is. I don't know how he doesn't have good stats. He's 99 ball carrier vision. Like, I have vision to run for more than 3.9 yards per carry. Defensively, team is looking pretty sick. Everyone getting better all the time. This is what, year four? I'd like to make the playoffs. Final year is going to be year five, no matter what. But we do advance to the divisional. And that is going to be against the Jaguars. Did we get Offensive Player of the Week for our QB? Roy Wolf, did you come out with Offensive Player of the Week? You dirty dog. Love it. All right. Conference championship time. Here we go. Please. We've done it. 
We have made it to the conference championship. The Wolfpack is rising as Bang Alpha leads them. All right. Full ego mode engaged defensively. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone won anything. We are one game out from the Super Bowl. Can we beat the Houston Texans? I'm riding sh shark adrenaline and bear testosterone, and we're in the Super Bowl. My screen is shaking right now because I'm... That was a lot of power and energy in that. 10-6. 10-6 Browns. You can see 9-6-1 Cardinals. These records are terrible. We can do this. Roy Wolf with another outstanding performance. More XP equals more wins. All right, Super Bowl Dallas. We're doing it. We are doing it. We're at 95 overall. We had 10 wins. Whatever. All right, Super Bowl time. Screw all this intro stuff. Larry Ridley's a... Whatever. Um, jumping forward. End of the game. Here we go. Cleveland is up 7 nothing. Make it... 13-0. We missed the extra point. Zane Gonzalez is a bitch. 13-3 Browns. Come on. Jabril Peppers. He's looking like an absolute thug on the screen with that face. I don't know if I can say that. 20-6 uh, Cleveland Browns. Please end it. Don't let them come back. Please. Oh my god. Are they coming back? No. 20-13 is the final. As this Cleveland Browns team has won the Super Bowl here in year number... Four, I'm pretty sure it's year number four. But the Browns are finally Super Bowl champions. I love it. I might do a year five just for fun, see how these players progress. But uh, I'm not sure. That'll be a game time decision. No pun intended. Game, yeah, I don't know if that's even, whatever. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get to the uh, celebration here. Is that Aaron Lynch? Doesn't look like Aaron Lynch. We're in the uh, same number though, I think. Is Aaron Lynch 59? He might be. Cleo Mack is the Super Bowl MVP with a sack, and that's his only tackle. All right. Yeah, I guess he went off with, with that sack. And, um, yeah, can we please get to the celebration so I can stop stalling here? Raise the trophy. Why are the Cardinals fans hype? You lost the Super Bowl. The stadium is filled with Cardinals fans absolutely losing their shit. Cardinals are so pumped right now. Even the Cardinals on the sideline are pumped. I guess everyone is so happy that the Browns just won the Super Bowl. Cardinals are like, fuck yeah, we suck. <laughs> everyone is going ballistic for the for the Browns winning the Super Bowl. That's I don't think I've ever noticed that before. In free agency, Evan Ingram's there. Number of players. Dalvin Cook's up to a 99 overall as well. The rest of free agency isn't exactly star-studded or anything. But there's some talent there. We're not really going to go after it much. And we, we got some players. We like who we got out there. I'm liking it. But, um... The draft, they can draft whoever. I don't... It, it doesn't matter. This is the team we got. Trying to repeat. Season number five. It's happening. More content can't be a bad thing, can it? I mean, you've made it this far. So... So this is the team for season number five. The fifth and final season. Trying to be repeat... Super Bowl champions, and we got a pretty good squad. A couple of Browns still on the team, actually. Emmanuel Agba, he doesn't start, though. But the starters, Danny Shelton, Larry Ogunjobi, and Miles Garrett, all still here. Uh, not too much at the second level, I have to say. But on the offense side of the ball, we have Corey Coleman. I mean, Josh Gordon's here, but he's regressed down to a 75 overall. And then Kevin Zeitler's still here. Joe Batonio's still here. David Njoku's still here. We have still got some, some Browns players, but we're going to simulate straight to the playoffs we make it we make it if we don't we don't super bowl champions please do not have a super bowl slump what do they call it they call it a super bowl hangover something like that why am i blanking on this term all right we have clearly made the playoffs 12 and 4 is the final here we'll check out the stats and see how we did roy wolf wow improved season from roy wolf i gotta say Nearly 5,000 yards, 47 touchdowns, only 13 interceptions. That's a great season. Rushing, Saquon Barkley still can't get four yards per carry. I don't know. 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns for him, 12 touchdowns for Sony Michelle. See, the thing with Saquon Barkley is, like, his spin move was in the 60s, and stiff and, and truck are, are not great, and, um, like, those are important things. Elusiveness isn't that high. 
So, I mean, like, obviously Saquon's better in real life, but could never really get anything going with this particular Saquon Barkley. Receiving DJ Chark, almost 100 catches, 1,342 yards, six touchdowns. Juju, 92 catches, almost 1,000 yards, eight yards short, three touchdowns. David Njoku, 82 catches for 986 yards, 10 touchdowns. Corey Coleman, oh my goodness, on 80 catches at over 1,000 yards and 19 touchdowns. Jesus, Corey. Have a day. Season. Have a, have a day every single week. It's more than a touchdown for a week. Blocking got better. Ruben Foster led our team in tackles with 109. Tackles for loss, 12 for Miles Garrett. Quarterback sacks, we have 12.5 from Khalil Mack, 10.5 for Miles Garrett, 8.5 for Danny Shelton. Interception, 7 from Ruben Foster, 3 for Cedric Hale, 2 for Landon Collins. wonder why those numbers are all down. Forced fumbles, only 1 from a handful. We only had 2 recoveries. Any defensive touchdowns? I doubt it. Yeah, none. I mean, do we at least just get stops at least? That's redundant. And we have the fourth best defense and like no sacks, no interceptions. Leonard Fournette wins his third MVP. Roy Wolfen second for the MVP. All right, the Desperados. The Bucks relocated. All right. Um, it's Patrick Montana. You know Joe? AFC Office Player of the Year. Leonard Fournette, Roy Wolfen number two. No other Browns. Defense Player of the Year. Telvin Smith, Ruben Foster at three. No Browns. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Michael Ashmore. Defense, Zach Masonette. But yeah, I'm going to use this XP, get this team better, and uh, Roy Wolf again has a ton. Best quarterback, NFL passer rating leader, and a Pro Bowl. Yeah, it's just, just awesome. This is the upgraded team. Looks very, very solid. Cornerbacks looking nice. Marcus Williams up into the 90s. Landon Collins progressing nicely. Morris Peterson up to an 86 overall in his third season. So it looks like it's finally paying off to not run with uh, with Joe Schobert. Offense, things are looking pretty well, pretty good as well, I should say. And the DJ Sharks up to a 97 with confidence. Roy Wolf up to a 96 with confidence. He's looking really, really good. And uh, I'm ready. Looks to be a 12-4 and wild card game. That's ridiculous. To advance to the divisional, it won't happen. It never does when it's supposed to. Yeah, fucking obviously. Uh, thank you guys for watching anyway. And I will see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Take it easy.